EM radiation is a wave. Well, what's a wave? It's actually a transmission of energy and information without the physical transport of a material. So what this means is you don't need to take the sun and bring the sun to us in order to transport the energy and information. It can get there without the physical material of the sun moving. To help understand this, water waves are a really good analogy. You have a pond, there's a twig in a pond, and you go and you drop a stone into the pond. And that creates waves. You can see it. And then after a second or two, you could see the twig start to go up and down. Well, the water that hit the stone is not going to be the same water that's making the twig move up and down. The energy from the stone dropping is being transferred through the water to the twig so that you can see the twig. Sorry about that. So that's how a wave works. Okay, The actual water or the physical thing it does not transport over it to the energy or the information that's sent. And there's different parts of waves, which we will get to right now. So the first part is the crest. And here's a picture of the full wave. Right? First part is the crest. The crest is the top part. The trough is the bottom part. A wavelength. A wavelength is the distance between two of the same parts. Okay, so some people like doing it, like I like doing it, from the top to the top or the bottom to the bottom. Right? And you can see wavelength is labeled top to top. Now, another way you can do it is where the X's are. You'll notice it's the same part. The problem with that, and, and my friend likes to do it that way, I don't, I don't know why, is, well, there's the X, the first X, right? And then you go down and you're moving up. And a lot of people think, well, there should be the X because it's at the same height. That's not a wavelength, right? You have to go, the first X is kind of on the down slope. So you have to make sure your next X is at the same height on the down slope. So down slope, down slope. Okay, so X to X is a wavelength, crest, trough to trough. Now, what's interesting, shorter the wavelength, higher the energy. And you'll hear me say that a lot from now on. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. Another part of the wave is the amplitude. And a lot of people think, oh, amplitude is from the top to the bottom. No. The amplitude is from the middle to the top or the middle to the bottom. I don't really care which way you measure it as long as you start in the middle. Okay. That will tell you how tall the wave is. And what is amplitude? The maximum displacement of the wave from the undisturbed state. That's why you measure from the middle. It's the undisturbed state. Okay. Higher the amplitude, greater the disturbance. Easy way to relate to this. Right? Think about the Olympics and divers in the Olympics. Their goal is to not make a splash. They don't want to have a disturbance in the pool. So they want the amplitude of the waves to be very, very small. Now think about your buddy at a pool party. He's doing a cannonball. He wants those amplitudes of the waves to be very, very tall. Because right? he wants to splash everybody. So bigger the amplitude, greater the, dis the disturbance. A couple of other things about waves. Wave period. How long it takes for one cycle of the wave to pass by. Now, that usually is pretty fast, so we don't talk about wave period, we talk about frequency. Frequency, how many waves pass in one second. Right, so you're standing there with a timer, set it for one second, and you count. Right? Again, it's easier to count like the crests or the troughs, right? so you count them. Okay. And frequency is measured in one over the period also known as hertz. Higher the frequency, more energy. Well, higher the frequency means more waves pass by in a second, so your wavelength is shorter. So higher frequency, shorter wavelength, more energy. Wave speed. How do you figure out how fast a wave is going? It's actually relatively easy. You know the frequency, so you know how many wavelengths are going by in a second, and you know how long your wavelength is. 
right? Shorter the wavelength, faster or more energy you have. So how big is your wavelength multiplied by how many waves are going by in a second? Do your wave speed. And here's kind of an example of waves, right? This is all of the waves in the EM radiation. You can see the gamma rays are on the left side. And look at how close those wavelengths are spaced. I mean, it's ding, 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 ding. Right. Then you get into x-rays, and it's a little bit longer of a wavelength, so less energy. Right. And then ultraviolet, visible, infrared, and finally radio waves. We can't even get three complete wavelengths in there. That's how far they're spaced apart for radio. The other thing that I like to show or point out with this picture, look at the visible. That's how much we can see. How much more are we missing? It's just kind of incredible. That is all we can see, that one little wavelength right there. Just incredible. All right, waves interact with each other. Two main ways, diffraction. So if there's an obstacle in the way, it can actually bend around the obstacle. The best way to do this, and since we live near Tampa, you go out on a pier, right? Even if you go down to and go to the Mantis and there's a pier there, you can see waves coming in and you can see them kind of bending around that pier. And then the other way is interference. Have you ever had the radio station on and <laughs> you start to lose your favorite radio channel and something starts talking over top of it and then you kind of scoot up just a little bit and everything goes back to normal that was wave interference two radio waves were coming together to create a new one right so that's why you can kind of hear both so that's interference